Hello and welcome. There's a very simple way to solve radical equations such as this. For this, we are going to begin with two substitutions. Let u be equal to 4 root x minus 3 and v be equal to root 6x minus 17. Now, of course, you know that with these two substitutions, the original equation is now going to be u minus v is equal to 3. Now, what we are going to do is that we will assume that u plus v, that is the conjugate of this, is equal to a constant k. And we are going to find that constant. How are we going to do this? Now, we are going to multiply these two equations. Of course, you know that if we multiply this by this, we have the difference of two squares. So this times this is equal to u squared minus v squared, and this is equal to 3 times k. Now, what is u squared? u squared is this squared. 4 squared is equal to 16. And the square root of x minus 3 squared, of course, this is going to take care of that, leaving us with x minus 3. Now, minus v squared is this squared. Once more, this is going to take care of that, leaving us with 6x minus 17. So here we have 6x minus 17, and this is equal to 3 now let us open this bracket we have 16x minus 16 times 3 is 48 minus 6x minus minus is plus 17 this is equal to 3k 16x minus 6 is 10x minus 48 plus 17 is equal to minus 31 and this is equal to 3k. Now, to find k, let us divide both sides of this equation by 3. So, we have that k is equal to 10x minus 31 over 3. So, now we have two equations. We have the original equation, u minus v is equal to 3, and its conjugate, u plus v is equal to 10x minus 31 divided by 3. Now, notice that if you add these two equations, you're going to eliminate v because minus v plus v is equal to 0. And when we do that, we are left with u plus u, that is 2u, is equal to 3 plus 10x minus 31 divided by 3. This is equal to 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 31 is minus 22. So this is equal to 10x minus 22 divided by 3. So now you can see that 2 times u, of course this is u, is equal to that. That means that 2 times 4 root x minus 3 is equal to that. 2 times 4 is 8. So we have that 8 root x minus 3 is equal to 10x minus 22 divided by 3. Now let us divide both sides of this equation by 8. When we do that, we have root x minus 3 is equal to, we can factorize this numerator. We have 2 into 5x minus 11 divided by 8 times 3. Of course, 2 into itself is 1 and into 8 is 4. So we have that root x minus 3 is equal to 5x minus 11 divided by 4 times 3, which is 12. And at this point, we square both sides. Of course, this is going to take care of that, leaving us with x minus 3 is equal to 5x squared is 25x squared. 2 times 
five x times minus eleven is minus one one zero x, and minus eleven squared is plus one hundred and twenty one, and of course this is divided by twelve squared, which is one hundred and forty four. And to get rid of the fraction on the right hand side, we cross multiply. When we do that, we have that. 25 x squared minus 110 x plus 1 to 1 is equal to x times 144 is 144 x minus 3 times 4 is 12 carry 1 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1 13 carry 1 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 4 now let us move these two numbers over to the left hand side when we do that we have 25 x squared minus 110 x minus 144 x plus 121 plus 432 and of course this is equal to zero from here we have 25 x squared minus 110x minus 144x is going to give us minus 254x and 121 plus 432 is going to give us 553 and of course this is equal to zero now we can solve this quadratic equation by factorization. Since the coefficient of x squared is not 1, let us use the table method. Five hundred and fifty-three has two prime factors, 7 and 79. But since we have a negative middle term, let this be minus 7 and let this be minus 79. Of course, you know that minus 7 times minus 79 is still going to give us plus 553. Now, the factors of 25x are x and 25x. This times this is going to give us minus 79x. And 25x times minus 7 is going to give us minus 175x. And minus 175x minus 79x is going to give us minus 254x so we have that when we factorize the left hand side of this equation we have x minus 7 multiplied by 25x minus 79 and of course this is equal to zero and of course, from here we have that either x minus 7 is equal to 0 or 25x minus 79 is equal to 0. When we add 7 to both sides of this equation, we have that x is equal to 7. Here, when we add 79 to both sides of this equation, we have that 25x is equal to 79. And when we divide both sides of this equation by 25, we have that x is equal to 79 over 25. So now we have two values of x that apparently satisfy this radical equation. We have that x is equal to 7 and x is equal to 79 over 25. Now, usually when we square both sides of an equation, extraneous roots are introduced. So let us check and make sure that these two values of x satisfy the original equation. We start with the second value. When we substitute into the left-hand side of this equation, we have 4 times the square root of 79 over 25 minus 3 minus the square root of 6 times 79 over 25 minus 17. This is 4 times the square root of 25 times minus 3 is minus 75. 
79 minus 75 is 4. So here we have 4 over 25 minus the square root of 6 times 9 is 54. 6 times 7 is 42 plus 5. 47 divided by 25 minus 17. We have 4 times the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 25 is 5. Minus. Now, 25 times 17 is the same as 25 times 20 minus 3. 25 times 20 is 500. 25 times 3 is 75. 500 minus 75 is 425. So 474 minus 425 is equal to 49. So this is the square root of 49 over 25. So we have 4 times 2 is 8 over 5 minus the square root of 49 is 7 and the square root of 29 is 5. 8 minus 7 is 1. So you can see that when x is equal to 79 over 25, the left hand side is 1 over 5 and the right hand side is 3. And of course, 1 over 5 is not equal to 3. So this value of x does not satisfy the original equation. Now, when x is equal to 7, on the left hand side, we have 4 times 7 minus 3 minus 6 times 7 is 42 minus 17. This is 4 times 7 minus 3 is 4, minus 42 minus 17 is 25. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. The square root of 25 is 5. 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. So you can see that when x is equal to 7, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So that means that the only value of x that satisfies this radical equation is x equal to 7. And with that, we come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you enjoy such content, please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a thumbs up to support the channel. Thanks for watching. And you can see more videos here.